So here are two examples of solving trig equations that are slightly more complicated. Uh, these are all going to involve some uh, factoring, perhaps, and maybe some trig identities. Still, we want to figure out which values of theta between 0 and 2 pi satisfy this equation. Now, the first thing I notice is I have sines and I have tangent. Now, usually this would be a problem, but in this case, I'm going to be able to factor out a sine. So let me show you how that works. First, if I'm going to do any factoring, I need to have one side equal to 0. Otherwise, factoring is not going to help. So let's subtract square root of 3 sine theta from both sides. We will get sine of theta times tangent of theta minus the square root of 3 times sine theta equals 0. And now I have two terms here on the left-hand side, and they each have a sine theta in them. So I can factor out a common term. There's a common factor of sine. So I get sine of theta times the quantity tangent of theta minus the square root of 3. And that's equal to 0. So now that I've factored this, notice I've been able to separate all of the sine terms and all of the tangent terms so that I have two trig functions. It doesn't actually matter here because I was able to separate them. Now, I have a product of two things equals 0. The only way that can happen is if either sine of theta equals 0 or tangent of theta minus the square root of 3 equals 0. So I can solve both of these trig equations independently. And these are easy trig equations like we saw in a previous video. Sine of theta equals 0. When is sine theta equals 0? Well, that's either theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to pi. Theta equals 2 pi would also work, but I want to be strictly less than 2 pi here, so these are my two answers here. Theta equals 0 and theta equals pi. Well, what about when tangent of theta minus square root of 3 is 0. Well, solve this like we'd solve any trig equation. First, solve for the trig function of the angle. Tangent of theta equals the square root of 3, adding square root of 3 to both sides. And then just look at the unit circle and figure out which theta give you a tangent value, y over x, of square root of 3. And it's pretty easy to see that that would be theta equals pi over 3. And there's another one as well. Tangent is positive in the first and third quadrants, so the one in the third quadrant would be theta equals 4 pi over 3. Okay, so there are my solutions. I have these two here. Theta could either be 0 or pi, or I could have theta being pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3. Four solutions to this equation. All right, notice this problem uh, required us to do a little factoring first and then break it up into two simple solve the trig function problems. We can make this slightly more complicated if we also require that we use a trig identity, such as this problem here. To so solve the equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi, 2 cosine squared theta equals 7 sine theta plus 5. Now, I'm not going to be able to separate the sines and the cosines by factoring here, so I need to rewrite cosine squared theta in terms of sine. That's not too hard to do. I just use the fact that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. That's our Pythagorean identity. So if we go over here and do that, we get 2 times 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to 7 sine theta plus 5. Okay, let's distribute the 2 and then move everything to one side so we get one side equal to 0. That will allow us to factor usefully. So we get 2 minus 2 sine squared theta equals 7 sine theta plus 5. And let's add the 2 sine squared theta both sides and subtract 2 from both sides. And we will get, I'll just also reverse the order of the equations, we get something equal 0. We will have positive 2 sine squared theta plus 7 sine theta. And if we subtract 2 from both sides, we would have a plus 3. 
Okay, so this now equals zero. And now we can factor this. Notice this is has a squared term, a term to the first power, and a constant term. So this should factor as something plus or minus a constant, something plus or minus a constant equals zero. And if we do that, the only way to get two sine squared theta would be for one of them to be two sine theta and the other first term to be sine theta. And the only way to get a three is to have a three and a one. And we just need to figure out which way it goes so that they add up to seven, the middle terms add up to seven. Well, two times three would be six plus another one, so it looks like it should factor like this. There's the three, there's the one, and they both happen to be positive. Now let's just check that that works. Two sine theta times sine theta is two sine squared theta. 1 times 3 is the 3, and then 2 sine theta times 3 is 6 sine theta, plus another 1 times sine theta makes 7 sine theta. All right, and now we can break this up into two equations. We now have that 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0, or sine theta plus 3 equals 0. And now we have to solve these two two separately. So 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. We'll just come up over here. That means that we have sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. And let's figure out which angles give us a sine value of negative 1 half. That would be theta is equal to pi over 6. And the other one is theta is equal to, let's see, we want to be in the second quadrant, so 5 pi over 6. Right. So that's these are two solutions for the first half, the 2 sine of theta plus 1 equals 0. What about sine of theta, sine of theta plus 3 equals 0? Well, if we solve that, we get sine of theta is equal to negative 3. And sine of theta is always between negative 1 and 1, so negative 3 is never attained. So there are no solutions for this part. All right, so these two solutions are our only solutions to this original equation on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. All right, well, I hope this has given you some idea how to solve more complicated trig equations. Thanks for watching.